Hey, what's up everybody? Boston here from Indie Film School, and I wanna tell you about the coolest thing you can do. If you have the new iPhone 12 Pro, iPhone 12 Pro Max, or the new iPad Pro, you can use the LiDAR sensor in your phone to take any space and turn it into a 3D model that you can use for all kinds of applications, including making your own films. There has never been a better time to be a filmmaker, a storyteller, or a digital creator. We have so much access to audiences around the world, great platforms that we can use to publish our content to, and of course, incredible technology. Apple kind of snuck in this LiDAR sensor on their latest uh, phones, but really, if you don't know what it's for or how to use it, I'm gonna show you that really, really simply. This video is sponsored by Polycam, and they actually have an app that shows you how to use your LiDAR sensor for free. So of course, step one is gonna be downloading the app. So go ahead and go over to Polycam on the App Store, download the app, and let's go through it. So let's talk about first, what is LiDAR? Now, I'm not an engineer, but the basic principle is a LiDAR sensor shoots out light rays and they bounce back to the sensor and it's able to calibrate distance. It basically looks at how far away light is bouncing off of objects. What that means is your camera can then interpret that data and start creating 3D geometry based on what it sees. In other videos, I've talked about photogrammetry and how you can use that to create objects or create spaces. It's essentially the same process, except you don't need DSLR, you don't need any software on your computer, you can just use your iPhone and the sensor. So that being said, let's break this down for you, how you should do it in a simple step-by-step -step process. If step one is downloading the app, then step two, you just have to pick what you want to scan. So for this, I went on vacation, we went to Disney World, which is a whole story in and of itself. Airport guy, huge. But we battle tested this app. Here we are at Disney Animal Kingdom, and I'm going to use the Polycam app to scan some of these amazing carvings that we see of animals all along the path here. So ultimately, the sensor on your camera is, is fairly small, and so there's gonna be subject matter that's better for this particular sensor. Now, it uses the sensor to create the 3D model, but it will also use your camera to be able to apply a texture. So the standard rules I always follow when I do a photo scan, whether it's with a camera or whether it's with this new iPhone uh, LiDAR sensor, what you wanna do is try to find even lighting conditions. Overcast days are great. Basically, you want things that are evenly lit and hopefully while you're filming, the lighting conditions don't change too much. For example, if it's a cloudy day and sun is coming and going, that might throw off the scan or the camera data. It's gonna adjust your camera's actual auto settings, but it's best if you can find something that's pretty evenly lit. Look, it's an overcast sky. We pretty much just have a gray, cloudy day, and that is perfect to be able to actually make sure that the shadows on my object stay pretty consistent throughout the entire scan. Because of the unique process of this app, I wanted to see how far I could push it. I tried it in low light, I tried it indoors, I tried it outdoors, I tried it outdoors when the sun was really bright and there were harsh shadows and bright highlights. And of course I found at the end that when you're picking your subject matter, you want to find something that is relatively large. I kind of think, think of things that are about the size of your sofa or larger. So step two, we picked what we want to scan. Now comes step three, actually going about and scanning your object. What's crazy about LiDAR is how fast this actually processes. Okay, as you're going around your object, there's actually a visualization within the app and you can see what you're actually covering. The rule of thumb I've mentioned in previous videos is whenever you're scanning something, you wanna see it from at least two angles. And if there's any objects that are occluding, cavities, uh, opposite sides of a face, you wanna make sure that you try to cover all of those things. So you kind of orbit around and the app will actually help you with this process, which I find incredibly helpful. Take your time, pay attention to the shape of your object. Now I went and I tested a bunch of things to see how well it would do. Again, more fine details, small objects aren't gonna pick up as well with the sensor. And also as a general rule, don't shoot through glass or any reflective surfaces. The light's gonna be bouncing in a number of areas. I actually shot through glass to see if it would work. And of course the light bounces off any kind of polarized glass. And so for best results, try to avoid glass or reflective surfaces as well as thin and small objects. Those won't pick up as well with your camera. Take your time, get the coverage you need. Then comes step four, processing. This is where the Polycam app is absolutely phenomenal. I went to Disney Animal Kingdom and there were so many cool things to scan, including while I was waiting in line for the dinosaur ride. Using the Polycam app and actually standing in line at the amusement park, I was able to scan a Tyrannosaurus head on the wall and then actually process it without losing my place in line. That's how fast this app works. 
you go into the processing screen and it processes on the fly. It's not going up to the cloud and processing it on remote servers. It's processing it on your phone. I was actually blown away because I've used other apps for this process or I've used photogrammetry software and the processing time can take forever. Literally, I processed a scan one time that took nine days. Now granted, it was a huge scan and it was super cool and there were 3,000 photographs. But with that experience, I really wanted to see how far I could push this app. So I found an area in Animal Kingdom where I was actually able to scan a huge room. There's literally a tiger on the other side of the wall, but the scan came out incredibly well. And that's when I opened up the app and found the coolest feature. The most impressive thing about what LiDAR technology can do is it actually can measure out the distance with a very accurate scale. So one of the features in the app is you can actually crack it open and after you scanned a large room, see the dimensions of that real room. When that happened, my mind was blown because here's the ultimate use case I see for filmmakers. Now, whether you're a filmmaker or a game developer, this is an incredible rapid prototyping tool. When I did my feature film, Alien Country, I actually used the photogrammetry process. I got a DSLR, I went into a number of locations, I took hundreds of photos, I processed them on the computer, I brought them into a 3D program, and then I essentially scaled them to what seemed like an accurate representation, and then I used those models for virtual location scouting. Now what that means is ultimately my crew wasn't gonna be able to come to every location. The time that we had in pre-production wouldn't allow for it, let alone a lot of these people were working full time on other crews and working in other states. So they didn't have the time to spend day after day visiting every location. So what I did instead was I made my locations virtual so I could share with them the 3D models of my spaces. However, again, the problem that I was running into as a creator was the time it would take to process a single room. So we did our bar location, which was the first location we were gonna be shooting at for four days. I used a camera, I processed it through Agisoft's Metashape, and I was able to bring it into Unreal Engine and do a virtual location scout. Because of my time constraints, I was only able to do this for a small number of the locations I actually needed to shoot at. So the coolest thing about this technology for me is the incredible time-saving feature. Now with this app, I literally can do it for every location and have it processed on the same day. And I can even send a version of that model to my other members of my crew. Now for me, I'm very comfortable with Unreal Engine, so I can take a 3D model, export it from my phone, bring it into the engine and use that to do a virtual location scout and to plan out that whole process. But if that's a little bit too much, too complicated, there's another really cool application that Polycam allows you to do. You can export from Polycam and then actually send through iMessages a 3D model that your phone will actually put into AR space. Basically, you could project your space up on top of a table and with your crew, go ahead and do a little virtual location scout while you're standing right there with your phone. With the space, you could literally zoom in there and come up with your camera angles right from the comfort of your own home. No additional software required, you're doing previs. You can use the export feature and there are a number of options in there. You can put it on a Sketchfab, you can export OBJs, use them in all kinds of programs. You can even use an STL if you wanted to do a 3D print of something. Like you could literally in a few seconds just take a scan of that old Canon and take it home. So Polycam is absolutely shaking up what's possible with literally just the standard LiDAR sensor that comes now with the iPhone 12 Pro, and probably every Pro phone that's gonna come out for a while. Seeing how well it captured this space at Disney's Animal Kingdom and the accurate 3D representation, I wanted to take this app and battle test it to the limit. Now on my vacation, I went to St. Augustine, Florida. An old pirate town, one of the old, oldest contiguously settled cities in North America. Originally settled by the Spanish, then the British took over, then of course it became an independent colony. And there's a landmark there that is pretty iconic that I had heard of before, and I thought it would be the perfect location to battle test the Polycam app. Here we are in a stormy lighthouse in St. Augustine, Florida, and I'm using the Polycam app to scan the entire interior and get an actual, accurate uh, LiDAR scan inside just with my iPhone 12. Could I use this app to scan accurately the interior of an 11 and a half story lighthouse? It's a little windy, huh? So I made my way room to room. I went through the exact same process, only it was gonna take a little bit longer. Now, of course, I went up the stairs and I knew as I was going up the stairs, the stairs weren't gonna turn out perfect because they're really detailed, a lot of wires, a lot of mesh in there. But I was just trying to get a relatively accurate scale of the entire interior, at least the interior I had access to. Now I'm doing this quickly, so ultimately it'll be pretty low-fi in the end, but the goal is to get an actual uh, representation of the 3D space, and if you were to really do some in-depth recreation, you'd want to spend a lot of time grabbing specific areas 
finding to find details and then rebuilding that again in a 3D program. Because of the weather that day, it was kind of crazy. We couldn't quite go outside on the deck. And because it's still an active lighthouse, we couldn't go into the very top floor. And I did an additional scan once I got to the top because there were some people and I had to wait my turn. It literally only took me a couple minutes on each level to get through the entire lighthouse. So I broke it up into three sections, but in the end, I processed the entire interior of the lighthouse that I had access to. I captured the main spiral of the building. I captured the very top. I also captured the inside and the outside of the base of the lighthouse in one scan. So I kind of rushed the, actually the outside of the base because while well, it was raining and I didn't want to stand out in the rain too long, but I got an incredibly cool result. Did it hold up? Yes. Boom. I truly believe there has never been a better time to be a filmmaker. We have more access to a global audience, more platforms to collaborate, learn, and publish our work on, and of course, more tools like the Polycam app that can actually help us create incredible works of art incredibly quickly. As a filmmaker, I will absolutely use this technology to do real-world scans of my film locations and turn them into virtual locations so I can plan out my shoot. Especially when things get complicated, when you have visual effects or other things that you need to plan for. If you need to know the exact size of the equipment, will it actually fit in this room? You will actually get a detailed scale model of whatever it is you're scanning. So you can know just by doing a quick scan that might take five or 10 minutes, process whether or not you'll be able to pull off your shoot in the way that you're envisioning. Or if you need to adjust or readjust even before you get on set. So my verdict is I was a little bit skeptical at first, but after going through this incredible battle testing process, this app is actually an incredible tool for filmmakers. I think it's an incredible tool as well for game developers, digital artists, whether 2D or 3D. Guys, thanks so much. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit that like button, that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, make sure to hit us up in the comments. Also, we have included a really cool offering for all of our students out there. Uh, along with this video, we've created a free tips and tricks photo scanning field guide. So you don't have to memorize everything that was in this video. You can literally just download, link in the description, um, our field guide and take it with you as you go about with the Polycam app or with the DSLR when you're going out into the field doing your photo scans. So hop over and download the Polycam app. I'm really excited to see what you come up with. And that's uh, the end of this video that's on YouTube. Uh, uh, you'll probably, this, that's this video. This YouTube video is over. There'll probably be other videos you're gonna watch, but um, but there's the, but uh, but this this is the end of this video.